We have the ninth roster update of NBA 2K23 that dropped a couple days ago. I'm going to cover the biggest changes of every single NBA team in this video. Look, uh, I'm a little late to this video because I was out of town and on vacation, but I am back now. This roster update was pretty much a good one, so I want to cover it as much as possible. If you like that kind of content when it comes to rating changes and all that kind of stuff, please join the pack and subscribe, and let's get it, man. For the Philadelphia 76ers, we have George's Niang with a minus one. It was a very small update for the 76ers. Nothing really to talk about. For the Milwaukee Bucks, this is a pretty substantial one with Brook Lopez plus one. This makes him tied as the third best player on the Milwaukee Bucks with Chris Middleton. This is a big deal because Chris Middleton was the number two option for the Bucks for the last four or five years. Now, Brook Lopez, who's a Defense Player of the Year candidate, scoring more than Chris Middleton, that conversation has started to change, and it's a first time for Chris Middleton and this Bucks team. You also have Jay Crowder plus two. He ends up becoming the sixth man, I mean, rating wise, on this team. A player that wasn't even basically playing this year, not to getting a serious role with the Bucks. You're always happy to see that. For the Chicago Bulls, who have kind of turned the season around just a little bit and looking like a playoff threat. DeMar DeRozan plus one and Zach Levine plus one as well. I do personally feel like you could tie DeMar and Levine as the best player on the team to this day. But regardless, it's good that they're getting upgrades because they have really found a way. Even with the injury of Lonzo Ball, they found a way to turn it around. Not the like acquisition of Patrick Beverly. It's given them a little different look for the team. The Cavaliers, very, very small change for Karis LeVert plus one. This does put him as straight up the fifth best player on the roster. Always a good thing to have a clear number five. Karis LeVert's a bucket and is showing that rating wise. The Boston Celtics. Look, we have our first downgrade with Jason Tatum for the year. His first ever downgrade. He's been up and up and up all year. 95 was definitely his cap. I, I didn't see him getting past that for sure. And it's even going down even a little bit. It's still fine because the Celtics are still one of the best teams in, in the NBA period. And they could absolutely still make an NBA Finals again this year. But Jason Tatum has slowed down at least by a little bit. You have Malcolm Brogdon, who goes minus one as well. Not a major downgrade or anything, but it ties him as the fourth best player with Marcus Smart on the team. For the Los Angeles Clippers, Zubach plus two, Tyler Plumley as the fourth best player on the roster. So whenever they got Mason Plumley, it was kind of a question of like, well, who's going to be the starting center for the Clippers? And Zubach, I mean, he was doing a pretty good job, I felt like, for most of the year. But with Plumlee now here, they're, they're kind of tied as who is the more important player. You could definitely make that conversation happen. I do think that Russell Westbrook should be tied with them as the third best player on the roster. I feel that way. But as of right now, I think this is a good change for the Memphis Grizzlies. Now getting John Moran back after suspension. Desmond Bain goes minus one. And then Tyus Jones plus one. Tyus Jones... I believe, I could be wrong, has entered the 80 overall club for the first time in his career. This is massive. I mean, this is a player that was for the longest time around the 78, 79 overall club. A guy that never averaged more than nine points a game is finally in the 80 overall club after years and years and years of play. You always like to see that. Good for him. For the Atlanta Hawks, DeJounte Murray minus one. So DeJounte Murray was an 87 overall with the Spurs, but ever since he got to Atlanta, he has not really found a good role with this team, and it has been showing all year long. We also have John Collins minus one. When I talk about a guy that has not been performing all year, John Collins would be the poster child for that statement. He has just not looked like the 20 to 23 point per game score we thought he was going to be. Now, DeAndre Hunter now is above John Collins for the first time in a while, and I have felt that this should have been the way it is all year up next we have jimmy butler plus one this is good for jimmy butler i do think that he's been first of all a really great defender i think he's been pretty consistent lately and the heat have been looking a little bit better as of late that's a good thing but the thing is it's their starters like tyler hero bam and, and jimmy have been playing very well everyone else though not so much kyle Lowry minus one again his lowest rating since like the rockets days and then you have kevin love minus one no surprise there, he's gonna be getting pretty old. So the Heat, their, their big three, I don't know if Tyler Hero, you count that as a big three, but their big three has been fantastic. It's just that everyone else is the reason they're not as good as they were back in the bubble. For the Charlotte Hornets, Gordon Hayward minus one out of the 80 overall club. We have Nick Richards going plus one, who's been getting, I think he's been starting for the team and doing very well. And then Dennis Smith Jr. minus one. The Hornets are looking like they're in trouble. Lamella Ball, hurt half the time losing miles bridges you don't know who they're gonna get in the draft this has been a team that does not know where they're going and the ratings are also all downgrading oh and michael jordan selling the team i think opposite can be said for the utah jazz you have walker kessler plus two to an 83 overall he is now the second best player 
on this team and they gave him the anchor badge now added this is one of the best shot blockers in the nba a complete surprise no one really thought he's gonna be this good in the nba but he's a great defender the jazz are super happy i mean from going to rudy gobert right who was defense player of the year for multiple years now to have a clearly like probably the best defensive rookie that's a great sign with laurie markinen this is a good sign for the jazz you have tht plus two getting a lot more minutes and a lot more opportunities to score because you know they've been losing so he's getting more minutes that's great for him and ochai agbaji also gets a plus two to a 77 overall for the sacramento kings a pretty important one is that malik monk plus one enters the 80 overall club for the first time in his career this is a player that was on the hornets the lakers had a 14 per game season with the lakers he's a clear bucket getter but this is the first year they have him in the 80 overall club he's been an integral piece for this kings team they have been blowing expectations for everyone He's absolutely deserving of this. Harrison Barnes minus one leaves the 80 overall club, but he's still, he has been the poster child for going 80 overall to 79 every other update. So no surprise here. The New York Knicks, one that has been going up slowly is Emmanuel Quickly. In fact, he's been so good that he's actually tied as the third best player on the team with RJ Barrett, which I do think is a little absurd. He quickly has really big games, but I think it's clearly RJ Barrett's the better player, even if it's just a little bit. But that's the case now. Mitchell Robinson minus two, who's been pretty inconsistent all year. And Josh Hart almost in the 80 overall club plus one. This is probably the best representation for the team besides RJ Barrett all year. This is a pretty good look. The Los Angeles Lakers. We have Austin Reeves plus one, making him the fifth best player on the roster. Wow, if you would have told me that Austin Reeves would have been the fifth best player on the Lakers, you would have been on the, the front page of the Lakers. I wouldn't have believed that, but Austin Reeves had deserved it. He's been a dog, and he's been amazing. Then you have Lonnie Walker, minus one to a 76 overall. Kind of a shame, because he was up to an 81 overall at some point. He was averaging 20 for a good part of the season. It's a shame for Lonnie. That's what happens when you get injured, and then the team remakes itself, and then all of a sudden you don't know what your role is. But Lonnie Walker has been going down. For the Magic. Some kind of interesting ones. Welcome, Wendell Carter Jr. plus one and Markel Fultz plus one. The Magic have a nice little future going on. With Wagner and Paolo Bancaro very young and 84 overalls, you have Markel Fultz who, you know, just a couple years ago, people said that he got, like, he forgot how to shoot. Now he's looking good again and looking like a good playmaker. Wendell Carter Jr. has always been solid. Your bench is a bunch of young, good players. Like, this is, this is a good look for the Magic. And then on top of that, they're going to have a really good pick. Who knows with the Magic Man with the Dallas Mavericks. Reggie Bullock plus one becomes the tied fourth best player on the roster. And that, that reason for that is that's pretty simple. So outside of Luka Doncic and Kyrie Irving, this team has been struggling really bad. The only players that are here, as you can tell, are really good role players. I mean, Christian Wood's supposed to be a borderline all-star, but the Mavericks have choked Christian Wood and have no clue what they're doing with him. But Reggie Bullock is a great 3 and D player. So of course, He's one of the better players on this team. Tim Hardaway Jr. is a great streaky scorer. That's why he's here. But everyone else, man, it's been a struggle. I will say, though, that the rookie Jaden Hardy plus three has been a nice surprise. I, I saw some stat that where it was like, if he starts on the Mavericks, he has really good games, like 20 point per game games. He is a 76 overall, considered one of the better players of the Mavericks. Would not be surprised if it goes up to a top five player position. For the Brooklyn Nets, we have some downgrades. We have Dorian Finney-Smith, minus one. He has not shown the potential as a defender that he did on the Mavericks, on the Nets. They also have Cam Thomas, minus one. You know, this guy was, we thought he was going to average like 30 points a game if he actually got the start, but it turns out that's not the case. For the Denver Nuggets, Jamal Murray, minus one. Now, this is okay because he's always been around the 85 to 84 range. But if the Nuggets want any chance of winning a championship, it can't just be Jokic. Jamal Murray has to be that dude we saw in the bubble. He has to show up a little bit more. Um, we know that Aaron Gordon's been pretty consistent. It's just kind of like, he's not going to be the guy that's going to win you a, t a game. Michael Porter Jr. can be, but Jamal Murray's the older player. We know how good he can be. I expect a little more from Jamal Murray at the end of the year. The Pacers, a couple small changes. It's basically Aaron Naismith plus one, and then Andrew Nambard or Nambard plus one as well. That nothing, nothing big here. Same with the Pelicans. Trey Murphy plus one. Someone's been going a little bit up and down all year. Mostly up though. Trey Murphy top five. The Pistons. First, Jaden Ivey minus one, which is a joke because he just had an amazing game last game. So Jaden Ivey should definitely be like an 82 overall. But then James Wiseman plus three to an 80 overall. The first time he's been the 80 overall club on merit, not like not as like a coming in rookie, but like he actually earned the 80 overall spot. 
that's massive. The Pistons have been starting him, and he's looking like he's a really good player. Surprise, surprise. I think everybody knew that James Wiseman was going to be good, and the Warriors weren't really the right place for him to be. The Pistons are actually using him like a star, right? And he's actually playing well. Imagine. With the Toronto Raptors, we're going to go with Pascal Siakam minus one, which is, I think, his first downgrade of the year. But then we have OG Ananobi plus one and Jakob Pertl plus one. So OG's been picking it up a little bit, but the person I want to talk about is, is Jakob Pertl. He's been averaging, it was like 2.5 blocks. I think it was around 11 rebounds and like, it was like 14 points per game on 70% from the field in the last 10 games. I, I mean, absurdly good center numbers. I felt that he'd been playing better than Fred, Scotty, and OG ever since joining back with the Raptors this year. Now, you're not going to put him as a second best player because, you know, he's more of a role player compared to these players, but still, it's it's a good rating for him, and I wouldn't be surprised if it goes up even more. For the Rockets, we have Jabari Smith Jr. plus three. Man, there was a lot of question marks for most of the year of like, is he really going to be good? Because he wasn't looking good at all this year. But these last couple games, I think he's starting to find his game. That's very important for him. You know, I I've seen sophomore walls where players have like a good rookie season and slow down. I've seen years where the rookie isn't really looking that good. And then the sophomore season, they pick it up. But I don't think I've ever heard of a, of a rookie getting a hell of minutes and chances all year and only starting to get good at the end of the year. This is kind of the first time I've seen that Jabari Smith looking good. A lot of changes for the Spurs, which is always a good thing for me. Keldon Johnson plus one back to the 83 overall. Devin Vassell minus one, but he's coming back from injury. Zach Collins plus two, almost in the 80 overall club. He's been on fire. And then Jeremy Sokan plus one. There's times where he looks like he's an 85 overall and then other times like a 70 overall. Pretty hard to tell with him, but he's a really good looking rookie so far. With the Phoenix Suns, we're gonna have Devin Booker plus one, 92 overall. This is the highest Devin Booker has ever been in his career. It's scary because Kevin Durant's coming back. You have a 96 and a 92 overall on your team, it's terrifying. But you have Campaign also playing well, plus one, and the TJ Warren minus one. So Campaign's tied as the sixth best player on the team. This is on paper probably the best roster in the league believe it or not no change for the thunder but i wouldn't be surprised if sga got another upgrade he's been insane for the minnesota timberwolves we have Jaden mcdaniels plus one this is probably the best defender basketball like for some reason he's been one of the best permanent defenders and post defenders in the league all season long the reason why the timberwolves have been so good is because they've been looking like a great defensive team on top of that now you have ant and carly towns at the same time this is going to be a pretty good looking team in the playoffs if they make it there for the trailblazers all we have is a minus two for this little to the 75 overall a downgrade for him for the warriors we have two upgrades we have jonathan kaminga who's been getting a lot more playing time plus one and then jermichael green plus one as well the main players on the warriors are not getting that many changes but i think they're ready for the playoffs for sure and the wizards we have daniel gafford minus one corey crispert plus one and delon wright minus one so we have three players tied as the fifth best player on the wizards corey crispert has been shooting really well recently so it probably could be him we're gonna have to wait and see but okay, those are the changes in this roster update. What do you guys think? Do you agree with 2K or disagree? Leave it in the comments below. And if you like this channel, please give it a sub. I'll see you guys next time.